Hello everyone, I'm Nutrix, and today I'm talking about a special firmware update for the Jupiter XM. Now what's special about it is just, it's not about the firmware update itself, because when you look at what it gives the Jupiter XM, by default, not much. But it actually opens the door to using the new software editor from the computer to remote control what's inside the Jupyter XM, or another way, have a graphic interface to set up the scenes, synthesis, use it as a librarian to save everything you want and organize the internal of your Jupyter XM in a graphical interface on your computer. But the first thing is we need to update the firmware. So you have to verify that your firmware is in the wrong version. Uh, it's easy. You press menu, you go information, enter. It tells you the version. In my case, I've got version 1.3, and we need to have version 1.43. So follow the information on the Roland website. When everything is OK and it's updated to the new firmware, you need to install the driver on your computer, and then follow the rest of the video. It works. I just finished updating the Jupyter XM to the firmware 1.43. And now, actually, if I want to check that, you go into menu, you go into last one at the bottom is info, it says 1.43. So I've got the right system. OK, perfect. Exit this thing. Now, I'm connecting a USB connector from the back of the XM to my computer, and I have the Jupyter X editor ready to, uh, to apply it. It was installed. I actually went into Roland Cloud. You don't need to have an account. Oh, well, well, no, you don't need to have a paid account. You can have a free account. So you, you open an account. It's free. You have access to some free stuff like this, the Jupyter X editor. And if you want to buy stuff, you can also, but by default, you don't need to buy anything to get the Jupyter X editor. Well, you need to buy <laughs> a synthesizer, but the, the editor is free. So you download it, and then we'll try that together. It's going to be a exploration of this. So turn it on. So if you look at the bottom, you've got uh, MIDI input and MIDI output. There's a list of everything I have here. Should have somewhere. Jupyter X, here you go, this one. And on the other side, also, Jupyter X. Perfect. Hope, hope this works. Go Editor. Hmm. OK. You get this interface. Right away, if I move something, does it change? Might not be. S oh, it's actually reading something. It's changing. If I change scenes, it's loading another scene. So, OK, so it's reacting in real time. So there's already a link between the two, which is pretty cool. So uh, you have scenes. Well, let's look at what we have. You can back up and get restore. OK, you can back up the whole machine. Pretty cool. You have scenes. If you click here, what do we have? Oh, OK, the internal. These are the scenes. I want to say Juno layer, double click, and I'm loading that in. So that's one I have here on the screen. It's written Juno layer. So I'm in the right one. And I've got that window. So I've got the four, actually, the five different instruments that are being played. And that they're using, these are the volume for each one, the keyboard. So we can get the information of, of the whole thing. If I press, that's my sound. If I press and I play with the tempo, so it's in real time. I want this to be louder. One chorus. So you have this kind of a mix window. You've got the send, the tuning, the key range, the velocity range, the R ARP. Do you want it? And OK, key, key triggering the switches 
on our key switches. Okay, you've got the bend range for the four of them separately. The mode, it's too small for me to read. That old eyes, so I don't know. Control tone, I'm guessing, normal. Got the control mode, legato mode, and portamento mode. Okay, so you have this. So this is basically general information about the scenes. And each of the scenes parts, you click on it, you have this part. If I double click, do I have something? And tone needs to be copied into a user tone to edit. Okay, let's put it in user tone. Let's put it somewhere. Okay, so it's actually using a memory space to store. That's something we see often on hardware synthesizers. Because what you're editing, you're editing still in real time with part of memory. So let's say the last one, 256, that's the memory space. Every time you want to edit, you say, I'm going to put it there. So that's the one you always erase. Um, and then when you find it ready and, and exactly what like you want, you save it to the right place. So right. So this screen, OK. This is cool. This graphic, well, if you know and you follow my YouTube channel and any video about the model expansion of Xenology, which is what is running inside this device, well, this graphic is basically the same thing as the... It's a little bit different. You know by just looking at it that this is the editor and not Xenology, but you have the same information. It's exactly the same information. You get the envelope, and this is in real time. It's a little bit low, slower because with, when I move this, it's sending the information in the synth. So if I'm here and I'm changing this, you see the graphic right away changing in real time. So it's a little bit the, the, the lag you see in the graphic, it's because it's MIDI being sent. Information changes and you see it in real time. So the time to understand the media information and, and graphically change it. So right away you can actually dive in and do some synthesis because everything's here. So you've got the rate, the, everything that you have from the Juno 106 model expansion is in that screen here. That's the editor, but there's also the librarian. Now I click on librarian. Do I have access to different things? Yeah, you get all the tones here. You get all these tones. You got the Zencore tones. Then you have Jupiter 8 model expansion, GX8P, Juno 106. You should have also access to, depending if you have it, the SH101. And if you have it installed, uh, the JD800. So these are all the possible model expansion you can have in the Jupiter XM. You have to buy some of them. Some of them came with it and others did not. So. This is really what it is. So you can go in and say, well, I want to modify this one. Like we just saw, you're going to double click and then you can edit. Actually, let's go back to the scene builder. Look at this one. If you double click, um, let's copy this one into this one before. So I'm not erasing the other one. That's it. So the graphic also changes to represent what the JX8P would have uh, type of interface and option. And this is, again, basically the same look as the Zencore, uh, the Xenology model expansion. Of course, a little bit different by just by looking at it, at it you know that it's not the same one, but you've got the two envelope, you've got the different options here, and you've got the sources here. So this the modulation sources. So modulation, breath controller, so this is mostly MIDI information coming in, which is logic. You've got a keyboard. You might want to have, you know, controllers sent to it and, and modify this in real time. So this is pretty cool. This is pretty neat. Uh, and you have the effects. The effects you have here are the ones that are built in into the Jupiter XM. Because everything you have right now, if you play this, this is the hardware playing, that's the sound we hear, that's where this is happening. But the graphic gives you more information. Because, I mean, you can do everything into the Jupiter XM, but you might find it difficult sometime because some of the advanced features might not be on the panel itself if you got the XM, which is a small one. The X as a 
bigger panel with most of, you know, one knob, one job uh, approach. Whereas this one, you have one envelope. Even if you have more than one in memory, you have access to one here. You see the graphic changes in real time, but you have access to this one. How do you switch to the other one? Well, filter. Hope this one works. No. Pitch. Okay, now you have pitch. Okay. So you still have enough control. You can switch between these and do it in real time. So it's actually pretty cool to actually see it and have more information. And some of us are more graphic, you know, visual for, for understanding how it works. And the fact that you can have also the librarian, it's a pretty cool thing. So you can even manage, uh, it, let's say you want to have the scene in a certain way, you want this scene to be first, you can actually put it first. So you could actually organize all the patterns, or sorry, all the scenes to go with the order of the songs in your live set. So it could be all step in the right. So you can program all of them separately and have everything you want. And you know that in your live set, you're going to start with So you just move them around, save that, and it's in memory. And then you can run with it, which is pretty cool. And so the four parts are basically the same thing. And the last one is the rhythm part. OK, so you go back to scene. You've got common, which is common to all the sounds. Arpeggiato, arpeggiator, the drive, the mute. You've got sliders that are here, what you want them to control. You've got the parts, each of the parts separately. You have them on the side. The rhythm, here you go. Yeah. The sound itself. But the rhythm is basically you load a drum uh, kit, and that's it. Part four. So you've got a quick access to the synthesis. If you don't need to change the whole synthesis, you can, you can just go here and modify in real time. Filter, amplitude, pitch, tag, case, scene, release, cutoff and resonance. So most, you know, a lot of the basic stuff people want to play with, it's here right away. Get controls, the way a monopoly is going to work, the ghetto, portamento, unison, so all that stuff you want per tone, you can right away change it. Then you get the zone, Zone should be the keyboard section. No, that's how MIDI, how does it respond to MIDI? What, uh, it's on which MIDI channel? How is it going to be reacting? On um, Each part is on a separate zone if you want. The master keyboard, control receive, okay. MFX, the multi effects for each part, which one you're using, okay. Effects like this, overdrive, chorus, delay, reverb. You can have that, EQ and compression for each of the parts separately, and the R I arpeggiator for each of them separately. You want them to react or not, and how you want them to react. So this is pretty cool. This is pretty deep. A lot of controls, and actually it opens you to some function that you maybe not, you didn't think about, um, because on the panel it was not so obvious, but in there you've got them grouped together. So, okay, this goes together and this works in the logic that it's together. So when all of this is done, you can just go back to the mixer section or the scene builder and save this to the scene you want. What is this section here? Okay, that's where you edit all this. Okay, that's the first one. That's the kind of a programming section. And then when all of this is good, again, we said earlier, you can actually back up your whole machine your hard drive, and then if anything happens, you can restore it back into the Jupyter XM. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So this is it. This is a free editor for the Jupyter X and Jupyter XM. Um, pretty hype, pretty, pretty happy about it. Uh, it's something that I was uh, asking Roland when I saw the Jupyter XM. I like the package, I like the size, I like portability, but it lacks a, you know, I would say a global view of what you do and the editor give us that. Now, <laughs> we want this for the MC-707 and MC-101. I guess that would be possible if you can do it for that. It also appears for the MCs. That's, that's me. That's how I see it. Stay safe. See you soon. Cheers.